Hello viewers, this is Dr. Hasanat, Associate Professor of Physiology, welcoming everyone to my today's lecture. Today, my lecture topic will be about physiology of autonomic nervous system. So let's have a short introduction about autonomic nervous system. Autonomic nervous system is the involuntary arm of the peripheral nervous system. So that is not under the control of your will. That is controlled involuntarily. Which control the activity of the viscera. That is why this autonomic nervous system is also known as general visceral efferent. And the effectors for autonomic nervous system are visceral smooth muscle, blood vessel smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands. And this autonomic nervous system is distinct from the somatic nervous system, which innervates skeletal muscle. Okay, so that is the difference. Autonomic nervous system innervates the viscera, but the somatic nervous system that innervates the skeletal muscle. That is why skeletal muscle can be controlled voluntarily, but the visceral responses can be controlled voluntary that is under involuntary control and that is controlled by autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system helps the body to adapt to environmental stressor and other challenges so simply i can say that autonomic nervous system helps the body to maintain physiological equilibrium during various environmental challenges or a stressful situation. Okay. So let's have a uh, look on the general organization of the autonomic nervous systems. There are several centers that can control the autonomic activities. The autonomic centers that are situated in the cerebral hemisphere, that is limbic system, prefrontal cortex, and the hypothalamus. Brain stem can also control the autonomic activity. The gigantocellular and parvocellular nuclei of the activity they actually influence the autonomic functions. They are also a part of reticular activating system. And the cranial nerve nuclei that are situated in the brain stem, that is cranial nerve 3, 7, 9, and 10. Now, the autonomic centers in this, of the spinal cord actually consist of thoracolumbar spinal segment, that is from the thoracic one to lumbar two spinal segment, and the sacral spinal segment from sacral two to sacral four. Here you can see this cranial outflow, that is thar, uh, three, seven, nine, and 10 cranial nerve, along with the sacral outflow that takes origin from the sacral two, three, four segment of the spinal cord, they are uh, together, they are called craniosacral outflow. And physiologically, they are related to parasympathetic function. So that is why craniosacral outflow is also known as parasympathetic nervous system. And the uh, Thoracolumbar outflow that is related to sympathetic function. So thoracolumbar outflow is also known as sympathetic nervous systems. Now, here you can see that autonomic nervous pathway use two neuron chain. That is actually the first neuron is called preganglionic neuron and the second neuron is called postganglionic neuron. Actually, uh, here you can see that the first neuron or preganglionic neuron in case of parasympathetic system, they are long. They are taking origin from the central nervous system and ends in the parasympathetic autonomic ganglia. And these parasympathetic ganglia, they are actually located close to the target organ. That is why in case of parasympathetic system, the preganglionic 
fibers are long, but the postganglionic fibers are short. But in case of sympathetic nervous system, the sympathetic ganglia, that is paravertebral sympathetic branch, they are located close to the central nervous system. That is why in case of sympathetic nervous system, this first neuron, that is called preganglionic neuron, they are short. But their postganglionic neuron is long. So that means there are two types of neuron that actually constitute the different pathway of the autonomic nervous system. First neuron is known as preganglionic neuron, and the second neuron is called postganglionic neuron. The first uh, uh, preganglionic neuron cell body located in the central nervous system and their uh, exon ends in the autonomic ganglia and from the autonomic ganglia the postganglionic fibers take origin and their exon finally innervate the target tissue or target organ now division of the autonomic nervous system I have, uh, there are actually three division of the autonomic nervous system sympathetic parasympathetic and the enteric nervous systems Sympathetic nervous system, I have already told you, that is uh, also called the thoracolumbar outflow. And in case of sympathetic system, the preganglionic fiber is short, but the postganglionic fiber is long. It is a sympathetic system is also uh, is responsible for the fight, flight, or fright response. Or I can say simply, sympathetic system always acts on emergency. Okay, and it also helps to maintain body's homeostasis in response to physical work. Like during exercise, it will stimulate the sympathetic nervous system to uh, supply the extra blood to the exercising muscle that is a cardiac uh, output should be increased. Okay, and it also mediates the visceral response to emotion like fear, anger, excitement, and embarrassment. Sympathetic nervous system also mobilizes the energy stores. So it is related to the catabolic activities. Okay. Now the parasympathetic nervous system, it is actually craniosacral outflow. The, this time this preganglionic fiber is long, but the postganglionic fiber is short. And it is actually predominant during the resting condition. It also responsible for the digestion and absorptions and maintain homeostasis when the body is at rest and urine formation. And this is actually energy, which is related to energy conserving activity, like anabolic activity, okay. And the and a, uh, third division of the autonomic nervous system, that is the enteric nervous system, that is the brain in your gut. And there are actually two nerve plexus just located within the gastrointestinal and track wall that is called mind freak and mesner plexus but today i'm not going to uh, talk uh, about the enteric nervous system it will be discussed in very uh, detail in the git lectures today now i am going to talk about the sympathetic nervous systems here you can see this picture clearly that uh, here is the actually this is the cross-sectional view of the spinal cord and this is the lateral horn of the spinal cord so the sympathetic preganglionic efferent neuron they actually takes origin from the this lateral horn of the thoracolumbar segment of the spinal cord and then they will emerge through the ventral root of the spinal nerve and then traverse to the spinal nerve as a preganglionic neuron this preganglionic neuron then communicates with the paravertebral sympathetic ganglia via white rami communications so this is the communications uh, between the ventral rami and the paravertebral sympathetic ganglia and this is made by this communication is made by 
preganglionic neuron. As this preganglionic neuron is heavily myelinated, that is why they are called white ramus communications. Okay. So here you can see this uh, preganglionic neuron take origin from the lateral horn cell or intero, uh, intermediolateral horn cell of the spinal cord from thoracic one to lumbar two or three segments. And these preganglionic fibers are mostly myelinated. They form the white communicating rami of the thoracic and lumbar nerves through the white rami communicant. And there is the ganglia of the sympathetic chains or trunks. So once the preganglionic sympathetic fibers have entered the chain ganglia, they have one of three pathway or one of three options. Let's see. In this picture, here you can see, this is the preganglionic fiber that, take, or, uh, that takes origin from the lateral horn cell, then emerges through the anterior root of the spinal nerve, then traverse through the spinal nerve and communicates this preganglionic fiber that communicates with the paravertebral sympathetic trunk or sympathetic ganglia cell via a communications. This communication is called white ramus communication and that is made by myelinated preganglionic neuron. That is why it is called white as it is myelinated. Okay. Now, this preganglionic uh, neuron, they will have one of three pathways or they will have one of three options. Number one, here you can see this preganglionic neuron, they will synapse with the ganglion cell of the sympathetic trunk and from there postganglionic neuron will take the origin. And this postganglionic neuron, they will re-enter re into the spinal nerve via a communications. This communication is called gray ramus communication. And that is made by postganglionic neuron. As the postganglionic neurons are unmyelinated, that is why they are called gray ramus communication. Gray ramus communication. Okay. And then this postganglionic neuron, Finally, they will innervate the blood vessel, sweat gland, and erector pili muscle. So this is the one pathway. Another thing, some preganglionic neuron, they will ascend superiorly to join the cervical sympathetic ganglia. Okay. Or they may descend down to form or join the lumbar sympathetic ganglia. This is the second option. Now the third option is this preganglionic neuron rather uh, rather to synapse with the paravertebral sympathetic trunk, they will come out of the trunk. They will come out of the trunk and they will end on the Prevertebral sympathetic ganglia. This is the another ganglia. That is actually this ganglia is located close to the target tissues or target organ or effector organ. They are called prevertebral sympathetic ganglia or collateral ganglia, like celiac ganglia, then superior mesenteric ganglia, inferior mesenteric ganglia, and through this ganglia, this Postganglionic fiber will take the origin and finally innervate the abdominal pelvic organ. Okay, so here is the uh, three options uh, after entering of the preganglionic uh, neuron on the paravertebral sympathetic ganglia. They may synapse with the ganglion cell and give rise to origin of the postganglionic neuron or they may ascend up to join with the cervical sympathetic ganglia or may descend down to the join with the lumbar sympathetic ganglia or they may come out of the sympathetic ganglia to reach the prevertebral sympathetic ganglia and finally innervate the abdominal pelvic organ okay 
Now, uh, I have already explained. Now, just uh, have a quick look. That number one, this preganglionic neuron, the synapse with the cell body of the postganglionic neuron of the sympathetic ganglia at the same level. And from there, postganglionic exon enter the ventral rami via the gray rami communicants. I have already shown you. And this fiber will innervate the sweat gland, erector pili muscles, and the vascular smooth muscles. And the second option that preganglionic fiber, they will proceed superiorly or inferiorly in the sympathetic chain and synapse in the ganglion above or below the point of entry. Okay, so here you can see uh, this preganglionic neuron, they will ascend up and to actually join with the superior medial and stellate or inferior cervical ganglion. Okay, so this cervical ganglion, they receive the preganglionic fiber from the thoracic segment. Cervical ganglion do not receive any preganglionic fiber from the cervical segment. Is it clear? Okay, fine. So here you can uh, here uh, you can see that preganglionic fiber emerges from the thoracic one to thoracic five, ascend in the sympathetic chain and synapse in the superior middle and inferior cervical ganglia. And from there, postganglionic fiber will uh, take the origin and finally innervate the head, neck, actually superior cervical ganglia. They innervate the head and neck uh, region by uh, through the postganglionic neuron and middle and inferior or stellate cervical ganglia. They will innervate the heart, lung, and bronchi through the postganglionic neuron. Okay. So here you can see the this picture again for uh, better understanding. So here is the superior, middle, and inferior gang. Uh, cervical ganglia and they receive the preganglionic fiber from the thoracic segment not from the cervical segment okay and this preganglionic neuron actually communi communicates with the cervical nerve via gray rami communication not white rami communication okay okay and finally uh, supply the the superior middle and inferior head neck and heart lung Okay, now some fibers, they will synapse with the paravertebral sympathetic ganglion cell and from there second uh, postganglionic neuron arise and finally, finally innervate the sweat gland, hmm, erector pili muscles and the blood vessels. And some of the fiber, they do not synapse with the paravertebral sympathetic ganglia, rather they come out of the sympathetic tract and they will actually synapse with the cells that is uh, located in the peripheral ganglia or collateral ganglia or pre-aortic ganglia. Okay, these are called collateral ganglia or pre-vertebral ganglia. They are located anterior to the vertebral column. But these are the paravertebral ganglia. They are located parallel to the uh, vertebral column. Okay. So, but that uh, this from this prevertebral sympathetic ganglia, the postganglionic neuron will arise and finally innervate the abdominopelvic organ. Okay. And this is the second picture. Here we can see again what is white rami communication and what is gray rami communication. White rami communication. This is actually made by preganglionic neuron hmm, that connect the spinal nerve with the paravertebral sympathetic ganglia. And this is gray rami communication that is made by postganglionic unmyelinated neuron and connect the paravertebral sympathetic ganglia with the spinal nerve. Is it clear? And finally, innervate the sweat gland, blood vessel, and erector pili muscle. Okay. So now, this is the uh, third options that I have already uh, discussed that some of the preganglionic neurons from the thoracic 5 to lumbar 2 do not relay in paravertebral ganglion chain, rather, they come out directly of the ganglion chain, joining with other preganglionic fibers to form the greater, lesser, or lesser spalachnic nerve to synapse in one of the prevertebral sympathetic ganglia. They are also called collateral ganglia like celiac ganglia superior and inferior mesenteric ganglia. 
and they finally innervate the abdominal pelvic organ. Some of the preganglionic fibers that pass directly to the adrenal medulla without synapsing. Okay. Now, functional organization of the autonomic nervous systems. Actually, this autonomic fibers, so according to the nature of the chemical they release, they are actually two types of fibers. Cholinergic fibers, those fibers that release acetylcholine and the adrenergic fiber, those fiber that release adrenaline and noradrenaline and adrenal. They are called adrenergic fiber. Listen carefully. Here you can see, in case of parasympathetic nerve fiber, both the preganglionic parasympathetic and the postganglionic parasympathetic, they separate acetylcholine. So all the preganglionic and para, uh, postganglionic neuron of parasympathetic, they are cholinergic neuron. Okay. And they innervate the smooth muscle, heart, and gland. But in case of sympathetic nervous system, all the preganglionic and the postganglionic neurons, the pre, all the preganglionic neurons release acetylcholine. So again, the, all the preganglionic neuron of sympathetic nervous system, they are cholinergic. All the postganglionic neuron of the sympathetic nervous system, they secrete noradrenaline, except those postganglionic sympathetic fiber that supply sweat gland, blood vessel of the skeletal muscle and erector pili muscle, they are actually cholinergic. This is the exception. Okay. Actually, normally, postganglionic sympathetic fibers are adrenergic. Except, exceptional is those fibers that supply sweat gland, blood vessel of the skeletal muscle and erector pili muscle, they are cholinergic. Is it clear? Now, what are the examples of the cholinergic autonomic neurons? All the preganglionic sympathetic and parasympathetic neuron, all the parasympathetic postganglionic neuron, sympathetic postganglionic neuron that innervate sweat gland, sympathetic postganglionic neuron that ends the blood vessel in the skeletal muscle. These are the example of the cholinergic autonomic neurons. Examples of the adrenergic autonomic neuron. We know that all the postganglionic sympathetic, they are adrenergic, except those innervate sweat gland, blood vessel, the skeletal muscle. They are cholinergic. Okay. And also adrenal medulla. Adrenal medulla, they actually, uh, they are sympathetic ganglion in which the postganglionic cell have lost their exon. And the secret nor epinephrine and epinephrine directly into the bloodstream. Now the autonomic receptors, uh, actually those receptors activated by acetylcholine, they are called cholinergic receptors. And those receptors are activated by epinephrine and norepinephrine, they are called adrenergic receptors. Cholinergic uh, receptors further subdivided into two types, nicotinic receptors and the muscarinic receptors. Okay. And adrenergic receptors, they are further, further subdivided into alpha adrenoceptor and the beta adrenoceptor. Alpha adrenoceptor is two types, alpha 1 and alpha 2. And beta adrenoceptors, there are three types, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. Beta 3 is actually a modified type of beta 1 receptors. Now, before going to uh, discuss the function of the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, just try to keep it in your mind that the tissues uh, that are stimulated by sympathetic activity, they will have alpha-1 adrenoceptor, except in case of heart, juxtaglomerular apparatus and adipocyte. They will have beta-1 adrenoceptors. In case of adipocyte, it is beta-3. Beta-3 is actually, I have already told you, this is a modified type of beta-1 receptor. Okay. And those tissues uh, that are inhib inhibited by sympathetic activity, they will have alpha-2 or beta-2 adrenoceptors. So in case of stimulation, 
the tissue will contain alpha 1 receptors but in case of heart beta 1 receptor will be stimulated also in the in case of juxtaglomerular apparatus and the adipocyte but the tissue those are inhibited by the sympathetic nervous system they contain alpha 2 or beta 2 adrenoceptors okay now there is a situation arise there is a very emergency situation a wild bear is chasing you and you are running away so this is not a normal situation this is the emergency situations huh? or the urgent situations okay so they are your viscera will respond in two way number one you may fight with this wild bear that is fight transfer or you may uh, running uh, away from the bear okay so that is called flight response so sympathetic system is also called fight or flight response also called fright okay so any uh, at the time of urgency or anxiety emotion excitement or combating the stressful situations sympathetic system is activated to provide energy to the body because you are running hard to save you from this uh, attack of this wild bear so your skeletal muscle is working hard so you need to supply more blood to the active muscles so in that situations your body will respond in a different way huh? that will increase the blood supply to the skeletal muscle but that will decrease the blood supply to the other areas like skin git kidney because during this situation is not uh, important uh, to increase the urine formation or to supply the uh, skin or to supply the git for digestion absorption this is actually emergency situations okay so let's see what will be the response how uh, your body will react to this situation by a sympathetic activations so in the skin there will be a pilomotor erections due to constriction of the erector pili muscles that means this erector pili muscle that is stimulated by the sympathetic activity that means stimulated this the stimulated tissue by sympathetic activity they will have alpha 1 receptors okay now think about the blood vessel that supply the skin so during this emergency situations this supply it will be decreased because you need more blood to the skeletal muscle so supply to the skin it will be decreased so if you want to decrease the blood supply to the skin so the vascular smooth muscle they should contract they will be stimulated that means this vessel uh, wall or vessel wall smooth muscle they will con uh, they contain the alpha 1 adrenoceptor and conostri so that the blood supply to the skin it will decrease now what happened to the eye so while you are chasing by a wild animal you are running away to save your life so you are looking for your far, uh, looking for far huh? so your accommodation your eye needs to accommodate for the far vision that is why you need to uh, dilate your pupil and your lens become flat huh. so for the dilatation of the pupil your radial muscle will constrict that means radial muscle uh, it will be stimulated that is why this radial muscle contain alpha 1 receptors and causes constriction to dilate the pupil this is also called the dilator pupil and the ciliary muscle that will be inhibited so ciliary muscle uh, become relaxed so they contain beta 2 receptor if the ciliary muscle relaxes what will happen the lens become flat and helps in the accommodation for far vision now what happens to respiratory systems in the bronchial smooth muscle it will uh, bronchial smooth muscle it will be inhibited that means it contains beta 2 receptor your bronchial smooth muscle it will relax during the time of this stressful or emergency situation like that so it is a good or bad while you are in a, a emergency situation 
you are running away from a chasing dog or bear do you think uh, you if you uh, bronco constriction it will be good for you or bad okay so you don't want bronco constriction in that situation you need the bronco dilatations that is why this bronchial sphincter muscle contain beta 2 receptor and during the sympathetic stimulation this beta 2 receptor stimulation will causes bronco dilatation okay now bronchial vessels contain the alpha 1 receptor and they will constrict and reduce your bronchial secretions okay and the mast cell uh, that is actually located in the perivascular uh, area this mast cell it will be inhibited or sympathetic activity stabilize the mast cell okay so that is inhibited that means this mast cell contain beta 2 receptors okay okay now the vascular uh, system response to the vascular system i have already told you this is the emergency situations all the blood supply uh, to the skin git and kidney that will be diminished so those blood vessels uh, smooth muscle will constrict to reduce the blood supply and they contain the alpha 1 receptor so blood supply to the git blood supply to the skin blood vessel to the kidney they will constrict to reduce the blood supply but but as you are running hard that means your skeletal muscle is working hard they needs more blood supply so the smooth muscle of the blood vessel that supply the skeletal muscle they will be inhibited to become dilate so they contain the beta 2 receptors okay so in case of coronary circulation uh, there is actually equal number of alpha and beta adrenoceptors and in case of cerebral circulation contain very less number of alpha and beta adrenoceptors so coronary and cerebral circulation is not influenced by autonomic nervous system in case of healthy individual but uh, this response may change if any pathological uh, process that involve those blood vessels okay what happens to heart actually there are two types of cell in the myocardial tissue the very special type of cell called conductive tissues they will be stimulated so they will contain the beta 1 receptors okay so sympathetic activity they will stimulate the sa node and increase the uh, impulse generation rate of the sa node this is called positive chronotropic effect and it also stimulate the con uh, enhance the conduction or stimulate the conduction velocity through the av node okay this is called positive dromotropic effect increase the conduction velocity and the parkinson system yeah. it will be excited by the sympathetic activity this effect is called bathmotropic but in case of severe uh, sympathetic activity this over excitation of the parkinson system may leads to arrhythmia of the heart okay and the main the contractile uh, myocardial cell that is working myocardial cell they will be stimulated and they will increase the force of contraction thereby increase the cardiac output stroke volume and cardiac output so this muscle cell also contain the beta 1 receptors so there is a cardio acceleratory acceleratory effects of sympathetic nervous systems okay what happens to git actually the git uh, sphincter uh, muscles sphincteric smooth muscles of the git that will be inhibited sorry they will be stimulated so they contain the alpha 1 receptors so in this emergency situation uh, if you if your gut motility increases and the sphincter relaxes what will happen you will fall in a very uncomfortable situation okay and that may uh, risking your life so you need to close your sphincters and dilate the longitudinal smooth muscles of the git to decrease the peristalsis so the longitudinal smooth muscle of the git that contain the beta 2 receptor they will be inhibited by the sympathetic activity and become dilate and reduce the git movement also reduce the peristalsis movement. okay and i have already told you the uh, blood supply or vessel supply the git there is smooth muscle 
they will be stimulated and they contain alpha 1 receptors so they produce constriction and reduce the git secretions okay because it is not necessary to increase the git secretion in the situation like this okay now the next important effects of sympathetic nervous system on your urinary bladder so urinary bladder smooth muscle is called dead pusher smooth muscles can you imagine if you are uh, you are in a you are chasing by a uh, wild bear and uh, in that situation if you feel urge for the urination it will be good or uh, it will uh, uh, make you trouble okay i think now it, uh, in that situation you need to relax your detrusor muscles otherwise you will fall in trouble okay so that means detrusor muscle will be in, inhibited by the sympathetic nervous system so this detrusor muscle contain the beta 2 receptor and become relax and the internal sphincter that will be closed so that will be stimulated so it, uh, that contain alpha 1 receptors and constricts okay what happens to uterus how uterine smooth muscle responds to sympathetic stimulation actually in case of non pregnant uterus the uterine smooth muscle contain alpha 1 receptor predominantly so they will constrict by the sympathetic stimulation but in case of pregnant uterus this uterine smooth muscle predominantly contain or express beta 2 receptors so in case of pregnant uterus uh, that will the uterine smooth muscle will relax by the sympathetic stimulations that is why in uh, some clinical practice in case of to prevent the premature labor this beta 2 agonist are used to relax the uterine smooth muscle now the effect on uh, metabolic process effect of sympathetic nervous system on the metabolic activity i have already told you in this as uh, sympathetic system acts on emergency situations so in that situation you need the metabolic fuel available in, in your blood so sympathetic nervous system will mobilize your stored energy and make them available in the blood so what will happen so there is a energy store in the adipocytes so, hmm? A fatty store so this fatty uh, cell they contain the beta 3 it's a modified type of beta 1 receptor so they will be stimulated and causes the lipolysis so increase the free fatty acid concentration in the blood but in the liver is this glycogenesis that is the deposition of glucose in the form of glycose in the, in the liver that will be inhibited as you need more glucose in the blood so you need to inhibit this glycogenesis so that is a liver uh, that contain the beta 2 receptor and due to sympathetic stimulation this glycogenesis it will be inhibited but the glucose output from the liver that will increases by increase by increased glycogenolysis so thereby uh, it will supply the extra glucose to the blood now pancreatic beta cells okay so as you need more glucose in your blood do you think the, you, uh, if the insulin secretion increase it will decrease your blood glucose level so what will happen so you need the reverse thing huh? so in that sympathetic uh, activity this pancreatic beta cell they will be inhibited so they contain the alpha 2 receptors and the insulin secretion decreases okay now the skeletal muscle actually skeletal is very important skeletal muscle uh, there is a muscle spindle specialized muscle sensory receptor that is very much important to maintain the muscle tone then that muscle spindle contain beta 2 receptors okay so during uh, sympathetic overactivity the, due to this over stimulation of the beta 2 receptors uh, that will cause dysfunctioning of the muscle spindle activity 
and that will cause tremor okay so that is very important sometimes uh, this tremor may occur as a side effect of the beta 2 agonist because we know we just uh, already know that this beta 2 agonist may stimulate the muscle spindle and causes the dysfunctioning of the spindle okay so that will cause the tremor now another last important thing i want to mention you know there's a thyroid hormone excess thyroid hormone that increase the sympathetic activity of your body and will produce some clinical features due to the sympathetic overactivity like tachycardia palpitations eh? nervous excitations so how this thyroid hormone uh, stimulate the sympathetic activity actually thyroid hormone uh, don't stimulate to release of epinephrine and norepinephrine rather they will increase the over expression of the adrenoceptor in the target tissues okay so if the adrenoceptors uh, increases so their sensitivity to adrenergic stimulation that will be increased so due to this over expression of the adrenoceptor in some pathological condition like hyperthyroidism the patient may develop some clinical features due to this over sympathetic activity so thank you very much we will do rest of this chapter that is about the parasympathetic nervous system in my second lecture on the autonomic nervous system okay allah hafiz